Good morning, Dharma brothers and sisters. Welcome to Buddhist Fellowship. Happy New Year. Very good to see everyone back here again. So my name is Ratna and it's so privileged and honor to welcome everyone on the New Year. So today we are very uh, grateful to have Sister Sylvia Vey who will be sharing with us some uh, nuggets of wisdom, insights. So before that, uh, let us all um, pay respect and do the morning puja. Let us all pay homage to the Buddha. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Please put our palms together to partake in the offerings to the Buddha. The offering of the five items allows us to express our gratitude to the Buddha and serves as a symbol to help us remember the teachings. Please join wholeheartedly and read the verses together. Offering of light. Light symbolizes wisdom. May the light of Dhamma dispel the darkness of ignorance. Offering of incense. Incense symbolizes the fragrance of pure moral conduct. This reminds us to cultivate good conduct. Offering of water. Water symbolizes purity, clarity, and calmness. It reminds us to practice the Buddha's teachings to cleanse one's mind which is full of desires, ill will, and delusion to attain the state of purity. Offering of fruits. Fruits symbolize the ultimate fruit of enlightenment, which is our goal. They also remind us that all actions will have their effects. Offering of flowers. Flowers symbolize impermanence. The freshness, fragrance, and beauty of flowers are impermanent. This reminds us that we should all live in the present. Remembering thus, we should reduce our craving and attachment. Let us all pay respects to the Triple Gem. Arahang Sama Sambudo Bhagawa Budang Bhagawantang Abhiwademi Swakato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangang Namami We chant the verses for taking the tree refuge. Budang Saranang Gachami 
Damang saranang gachami Sanghang saranang gachami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Dutiyampi damang saranang gachami Dutiyampi sanghang saranang gachami Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Tatiyampi damang saranang gachami Tatiyampi sanghang saranang gachami we chant these verses to observe the five precepts. Panati pata veramani sikha pada samadhyami Adinna dana veramani sikha pada samadhyami Kame su mi cha cha ra we ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi Mu sa wa da we ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi Su ra me ra ya ma ja pa ma da ta na Veramani Sikha Pada Samadhyami Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Buddha. Iti Piso Bhagava Arahang Sama Sambudo Vijacarana Sampano Sugato Lokavidu Anutaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Sata Dewa Manusanang Buddha Bhagavati Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Dhamma. Swakato Bhagavata Dhamma Sanditiko akaliko ehipasiko opanaiko pachatang veditabo vinyuhiti. Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Sangha. Supatipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Uju Patipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Nyaya Patipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sami Chipatipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yugani Atha Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakineyo, Anjali Karaneyo, Anutarang Punya Ketang Lokasati. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.
Hi, welcome everyone. So let's um, hear some announcement. So basically, uh, this is the schedule for January Dhamma talk. All right, next week we have Brother Wong Taiwi who will be sharing on generosity during Buddha's time. Yeah, we also have Dhamma Foundation course by Sister Sylvia and Brother Tan Bang Hock. The on-site meditation class has been full, so if you still want to register, you can still register for the Dhamma class that will be starting on 26th of February. Right, yeah, it will be at uh, BF West as well as Zoom too. Uh, we also have Junior Youth Orientation Camp for uh, kids aged 13 to 16. So it will be held on next week, Saturday, 8th of January, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you need more information, you can contact Su Yen or Elizabeth. Uh, we also have uh, Junior Youth. If you have any kids or relatives or friends who have uh, age 13 to 16, and uh, please bring them along to the junior youth uh, talks every Saturday, 3 to 5 p.m. So we have a different talks, uh, and the session is conducted online as well. Uh, for BF Junior, for age 7 to 9 and 10 to 11, we also have a session on the 9th of January and 23rd of January, so it'll be conducted on Zoom. So if you are interested or your kids and all that, you can sign up at the Eventbrite. We also have a, a Zoom yoga session uh, by the, this teacher Deepa Souza every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.45. So even though it's still ongoing, you can still email uh, the teacher to join the session. And um, yeah, in, we wanted to um, raise funds for the BF Dhamma Home. So if you like, you can actually request to share your favorite sutta so we can record and then upload it in our BF YouTube channel. So any amount will do, not necessary at that amount. All right. <laughs> And, um, okay, we are, uh, the Chinese New Year is approaching very soon, so we would like to encourage you to come and support BF Dhamma Home by purchasing some cookies for Chinese New Year. You can also donate it to the home for the less privileged, as well as this, whatever proceeds is, uh, will be going to the BF Dhamma Home project as well. All right, you can, uh, all the collections will be on site at BF. So if you can see uh, at the office, there are a lot of cookies. So before you leave, please grab one. And uh, we also have happy workout. And this is all conducted online. So if you are keen, you can actually register at Eventbrite and you will get the link to the Zoom. Yeah. Okay, and last but not least, we have... Uh, BF Dharma Home uh, fundraising project. So if you like to support our, um, you know, Buddhist fellowship to get our new Dharma Home, uh, please go to the BF Dharma Home website below and then uh, please donate generously. <laughs> All right, I think, yeah. All right, today we are very privileged to have Sister Sylvia Bay to... <laughs> All right. Okay, without, <laughs> without further ado, please uh, put our hands together to warmly welcome Sister Sylvia that will lead us in the meditation followed by Dhamma sharing.
Okay. Given today's talk, given the theme today, so this morning's meditation will use one of the qualities. Let's use gratitude, okay? Can I have the lights off? All the lights off? May I invite everyone to sit back, relax, close your eyes, sit comfortably. We have a little bit of a preamble, just sit comfortably, back upright, not ramrod straight, no need to be too stiff, just relax, okay? Take a deep breath in. Deep breath in, slowly breathe out, as slow as you can. Deep breath in again, deep in, all the way to your stomach, all the way in. Then slowly release. Deep in again. When you release, make sure you squeeze every ounce, every little droplets of air out of your system. Now do a quick scan of your body. Just scan, scan from top to toe. Just scan quickly. Observe the body upright. Observe the body in contact with the floor. Observe the body breathing. Body is breathing on its own. Don't do anything to it. You don't have to intervene. You leave it alone. It breathes on its own. Feel yourself relax. Feel the tension slip away. Feel gratitude for the air the fresh air that your system is absorbing. If you relax, if you find that your shoulder, your back is tense, I want you to say to the body, Relax. Be at ease. This is the short time we're allowing the mind to relax, to be accepting. You're here in the Dhamma Hall. Before the Buddha, you are accepting your content. Content, grateful that in this life, you are born a human. Being a human means all opportunities to learn the Dhamma. To understand the Dhamma. Grateful that you are born with intelligence intact. So you have the condition for understanding the teaching. With 
every breath in, you say, I'm grateful. With every breath out, you wish that your loved ones too will have the opportunity to learn the Dhamma. You're making an aspiration for your loved ones. So pour every hope for them. I hope that they too will have the opportunity to come before the Buddha and learn the Dhamma. So that they too will experience how the mind feels when it has no desire. Every moment without desire, the mind is at ease. So again, every breath in, gratitude for the Dhamma, grateful to be born a human, and in this life, an opportunity to learn and understand. With every breath out, wish for your loved ones the same blessing. We'll do this for a short while. Then when you are done, take a mental bow before the Buddha. Express your gratitude for the teaching that he has left behind. You will end your sitting with three, three deep breaths. Then you stretch yourself. Now do this at your own time. Do it slowly at your own time. How long do you think you have sat? It's about almost 10 minutes. Can someone draw the curtain a little? Thank you. Please come in, be seated, be comfortable. Plenty chair here. Come, come. He would love company. <laughs> Do you like my flowers? <laughs> They're so pretty, right? You know, I think BF needs to change the lights. Y your projector a bit dark. Can we turn off maybe the lights at the back? June, the curtain. <laughs> okay, the other side also. Can you all see better? Is it clearer for you, everyone? Okay, shall we begin? You must be wondering why, what a strange topic. Usually you just pick one and 
be happy with it, right? Why four? Right? So ambitious today, we cover four topics. There is a reason for that, okay? Anyone recognizes anyone recognize this, this collection, this galaxy of, of uh, mental states? For those who, who've just completed DFC 1, you don't recognize, ah? Huh? <laughs> this was taken from Mangala Sutta, okay? Normally, when you throw in like a, state of, a set of mental states, how, do usually, how would people usually approach this topic? They will say what those mental states are, right? How do you cultivate them? Why are they important? Etc. Etc. Yeah? Usually, that's the approach. What are they? They will describe. Then, how do you cultivate? Then they describe. Or maybe in the midst of it, they will say, why are they so important? Now, if I, throw, if I give you all those mental states, you all know what they are. Respect, humility, contentment, gratitude. As long as you speak English, you will know what they are. You may or may not have those mental states in loads. Of course you have them, but whether they are a lot or very little, it depends on the individual. It's also conditional, it's also depending on whom you're with, is it a good day for you or a bad day, you woke up on the wrong side of bed, suddenly all the mental states disappear. I'm a very grateful person, but today I'm very angry, cannot be grateful. Right? We are a bit like this. So I decided there is no point me sitting down here pontificating to you what those mental states are and why they are so important and how you cultivate it's no point. Instead, we're going to take a slightly different approach, okay? Let me ask you this question, which is directly relevant to everyone. Life is stressful, right? Buddha's truth number one, Tukka Arya Satya, the noble truth of dukkha. Life is stressful, right? For those of us trapped here in Singapore, separated from our loved ones, the perennial question, when is this stupid border going to open? When are we going to have like a victory against COVID? Do we have to like hedgehog like that? Every so often, go pop, pop, pop. Booster one, booster two, booster three. Two years later, booster 25. <laughs> so perplexing, so much pain, so much dukkha arya satya, right? So painful, huh? every time like that one. Why we cannot always be happy, huh? Why? Uh? Isn't that what we all want? We all want to be happy. Why Lao Tian so pu kong ping, eh? Ever so often, why is happiness not a default state? You may not realize this. Eh? For most of us, for most time, our state of mind is delusionally happy. Delusionally happy. Because we are anticipating how to be happy how to do things for ourselves. So in, in, in the anticipation, you become happy. Like you're planning for a trip. In the entire period up to the trip itself, nice, leh, I go for a trip next month. Leh. COVID notwithstanding. Got VTL. Now can I suspend it? Never mind, it will come again. So we all anticipate January 20th, then we're happy. Do you see that? In the anticipation, you are happy. Or temporarily, like, that's why it's delusional. Lo. Moha. Lo. Okay? Then you say, what have all these things got to do with to this topic? You wait, la. you wait, you wait. In order for life to be regarded as meaningful, actually, you have to have happiness. If you don't believe me, right, you just think about your life. All of you. You're not in my class, so I cannot ask you to take out your bow and write down, okay? All of you, you think about it. 
what is the single most meaningful thing you have done in this life? All of you think of one, huh? All of you. Can think or not? Got, not? Got one, one, one item. Single most important, most meaningful work or deed or event that you have experienced in your life. Got one or not? Yes? One? Auntie, got not? One item, got ah? Huh? Okay. Were you happy then? Did you experience happiness then? Did you experience joy? When your child was born, when you scored well in whatever, when you came before the Buddha and you bow and you feel that this is so meaningful, the day that you understood the Dhamma brought tears to your eyes. Did you remember that? I got to tell you, you're thinking about the mundane one. Thinking of all the mundane one. If you were to die tomorrow, can you remember that moment that you were born a Buddhist? Can you remember? Would you then say that was meaningful? That was valuable? So you all think of the mundane one, the secular one, then mm, like me, yo. Because mundane life not happy, ma. Mundane life got moments of giggles. But the time that really hits you in your heart is that moment where there is a spiritual awakening. Small or big, doesn't matter. But there was that spiritual the touch of the Dhamma. Agree? How many of you have felt that? The rest of you need to come for class. <laughs> no matter how I win one, this card, okay? Now, that stanza, respect, humility, contentment, gratitude, that stanza came from Mangala Sutta. And I introduced this, I could have just given you Kudaka Pata 5, but instead I give you Sutta Nipata 2.4. Why? Because this is one of the few suttas that appeared in different places. It actually tells you our, the, the elders who collected the scripture, the suttas, felt it was important. So important, they replicated it. There are a few that are replicated. You can see it here, you can see it there. The other one is Dhamma Chaka Pawatana Sutta. So you think about it. Our, our teacher from a long time ago, when they compiled the sutta, collected it in two places. Can it not be important? For many of us who may have been introduced to Mangala Sutta a long time ago, we were still young and giddy and blah, blah. We remember this sutta. It's so beautiful, we said. First time we see it, so beautiful. Second time, why the sutta so long? Ah? Chan cannot finish one. Chan, 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 chan cannot finish. There are some sutta like that. They're quite long, but they're beautiful. And until you really understand them, you don't really appreciate them for this beauty that they are. Okay? So this, I, I pluck out. I pluck out these four to introduce to this talk today. So now, my next question. Earlier on, we said, why are we so stressed, right? Now I ask you, what are the, what are the times when you are stressed? Uh, this is when I miss Ailing. Eh? Where's Ailing, huh? Who is monitoring the, the website? Jenny, you're doing it, ah? Sorry? She's late. She's coming. <laughs> She's late. <laughs> Sorry, everyone on the internet. On Zoom, Eileen will be coming soon. <laughs> do, do, do you think she can make it in before 12.30? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why are we so stressed? You all have no help online, okay? You're on your own. Why, do you, why are you so stressed? Why are you stressed? Ah, you have to take care of people, parents, children, and so on. Very good. Why are you so stressed? Huh? 
Hello, wanting and craving. Why you guys submit up for everybody already? La. <laughs> Must give others a chance. La. Why, why your stress? Someone come up. You mean this is it? La. This is a very happy class. La. If this is all you have taking care of people and wanting and craving, right? That's it. Who stress because of financial issues? Debts to pay, credit card to pay, taxation. Who stress because of that? A bit, uh, a bit, uh, a bit. Uh, uh. Who stress because inflation? Uh, inflation. Uh, who stress? Uh? Who stress? Uh, a bit. Uh. I like him, you know, he's so honest. Who stress because uh, yeah, the health got problem? Uh, yeah, body, body. Uh, uh, yeah, COVID. Uh, yeah, COVID uh. Who, who, who? You're not stressed because of COVID? Uh? Uh, yeah, la, you're so good there. I like you. Uh, yeah. Who stress because I'm too fat? Uh, I'm too fat. Uh, I'm growing fatter and fatter. Like, why? Uh, why? Uh? Who stress because worrying for children, for parents, for. Uh, uh, Hey, you must be more creative. Yeah, I sat down there and I thought very hard and I came up with a whole list, you know. Uh, you must be better than me. If you can come up with something that is not here, I say you win, okay? If all that I put down there more than you are, I win. Uh. I spent quite a bit of time thinking about it. It will come out, don't worry. So, come on. Car trouble, aircon trouble, house trouble, leaking, fire, blah, 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 blah. Any more? Any more? Work! Exactly, work, bad bosses, difficult colleagues, subordinate boy Any more? Yes. When I Ah, struggle with meditation. Very good. Ah, very stressed. Spiritual pursuit also stress. What about those people who have been looking for the Dhamma and go from one teacher to another having different stories? Stress or not? Stressful, right? You say like that, you say like that, then you say he wrong, he say you wrong. Kalama Sutta. Buddhists have their own Kalama Sutta. Eh? Anymore? Give her, I, I'm trying to stretch it a bit for Eileen to make her appearance. <laughs> Who's stressed because Eileen missing? <laughs> Jenny, the first one. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give it to you. Huh? Uh, see? Eh? Go and find it. Stress because public speaking, stress because property prices. <laughs> I, I was quite brilliant. What I do is, I separated it into financial, health. So when, the, when it worked, the first thing, and I also asked my mother. I sat down and I spoke to my mom, mom, mom why are you stressed? I, uh, then she will say her things. Lah. Then I will write down. Uh, public image. Stressful or not? You say not stressful. Then why you choose the clothes you wear, put on makeup for the woman. Uh, men don't put on makeup, okay? Etc, uh, etc. Et In-laws. I train. Okay, the bigger ones are the ones that more people are affected by. If we have a system for measuring I will ask everybody to key in and then boom, the thing will come out and then we have a proper survey. But since I don't have that, you have survey-based survey. So I think a lot of us are stressed because of work, because of bosses, because of in-laws, because of COVID. Then the smaller one, right? The smaller one like loan shark, <laughs> dating. Uh, those smaller one, right? Uh, the smaller one means I don't think, I think most of us won't have that problem lah. But there will be one fella somewhere in the world out there that we know with that problem. That's why it never came out in anybody's estimate. Huh? Uh, dating also, most of us too old to date. Lah, huh? So if this is a class of youngster, right, dating will be big, big. Eh? Uh, nobody talk about dying, I'm pretty sure, unless someone just passed away. But for most of us, we don't talk about dying. Which is then a problem. Because the Buddha said it's a big thing. Right? Ah, uh, okay. So what gives us stress? These things. Now, I want you to take a look at those things, those items up there, and see if you are able to pull out themes, big themes about those things. There's a lot of things. How is the Buddha going to advise you on so many things? So Buddha quite brilliant, okay? Okay, not quite. Like, Buddha is super brilliant. In all of this, uh, you all can remember, right? Yes, yes. Oh, let's give her a good time. Mm. 
ladies and gentlemen on the Zoom, Madam Ailing is in. <laughs> now you all have a voice. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about that. They worry, we don't worry. We have no stress here. No stress. <laughs> okay, you look at the themes up there. Are you able? Do I sound like that? <laughs> okay, you look at that, that list there, that, that, that galaxies of, of events and things, eh? this, this cluster of it. Eh? And you tell me if you can pull out themes. I'll give you a moment to think about them. Therefore, our stress, the stresses that we experience can actually be boiled down to two things. Two things. people and situation. Agree? It's basically just, I, I, okay, the word situation, right, it's because I can't think of a better word. If I put the word thing, it doesn't make sense. So what do I mean by situation? Like, for instance, um, health. Health issues. Children's education. Uh, COVID situation. So it's like situation, events. Um, thing, fortune or lack of it, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so that's non-human, non-people related, but one set, one big set is about people, which is about your spouse, your children, your husband, your bosses, the colleagues, the random stranger on the street, etc., etc. It's about human giving us stress, okay? And then the other one is just situation, event. Uh, thing. My English today is limited. Why, when, how do people cause each other stress? You tell me. This is your life. How? Why do people give you stress? So I want you to think of one individual in your life who has given you stress. And who's still stressing you? Is there somebody in your life? Is there, first, my first question Is there someone in your life that you dread to interact with for whatever reasons? Is there one person in your life like that? Yes? Sure, have one. Don't have your saying, I see the hello on your head. <laughs> sure, have one. Eileen doesn't have. <laughs> Can't you see the hello on the head? <laughs> Sure have one. It's just that she doesn't take it personally, so she cannot remember. <laughs> like <laughs> today, uh, today, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, is there somebody in your life that gives you stress? So now I ask you, that person, right? When does that person give you stress, and why does that person give you stress? Disagreement. Expectations. expectations. Different expectations. So, voila! Score boy. Expectations. A sense of entitlement. Differing desires. So, therefore, loba dosa. You get stressed. Okay? You get stress in this relationship because in this relationship, you have different opinions, different thinking, but you bring it down to even, even, the, even more of the core, the essence. It's usually because you both have very different views, different desires. And if you throw in expectations into the mix, I expect that you understand. You expect that. I understand. You throw in the sense of entitlement, you finish. I can expect that you understand, but if I'm, I don't feel very entitled, you can still get away with it. I can still get away with it. But if I feel very entitled, I'm your mother. Eh? I'm your mother. Eh? Why you never listen to me, huh? Ah, die. 
not only is the expectation odd, but now she expects, she feels very entitled that I must give in to her. Mother got passport, okay? Mother, father all got passport. They throw in this one, you, eh, I don't know how to argue with that. So you cannot say, are your children, eh? are your child. Eh? That one cuts no way. You still lose hands down. <laughs> okay. Now, I say either us and or another, right? Means sometimes the expectations is you or, your, or the person. Sometimes it's both ways. So if you look at the problem that you had experienced, right? When it is both ways, the odds are both are equally very high on expectations, possibly just as high on entitlement. If one side has lower expectation than the other side, less intense views, your differences either can be resolved or can be put aside, can be put on the back burner. So one side, one side must give in, I'll put it simply. Lah. Okay? Then you give in too often, they cannot take it ready. So this is very conditional and it fluctuates very fast. And it's very seasonal. On a good day, mother doesn't, make ins doesn't insist. On a bad day, she insists on everything. It's very seasonal. Feelings driven. Agree? No wrong, huh? Okay. Agree? Sometime, your or the other person at fault. It can be real, meaning the person did take your things without asking. Or it can be perceived. You thought it happened. You ascribe reason. You ascribe motivation. None of it is true. It's all in your mind. Possible? Possible. Otherwise, why are you so wronged? There was a joke, <laughs> which nobody caught. You're too engrossed in this very seriously. It's a fun session, okay? Relax. Huh? Relax. Real or perceived. Agree? I need you to go through this very carefully. Innate or habitual. Sometimes you already have a certain perception of someone and, and or, or it's you at fault. You are by nature suspicious. It's what my niece would say, you're very sus. You're very suspicious. Okay? You are naturally sceptical, naturally cynical because of whatever events in the past that shape you into like that law. Then because you are like that law, anybody cross your path, you will treat them much like they are criminal. You are naturally suspicious of them. Or it can be, for whatever reason, that person has a problem. That person treats everybody in the same suspicious, cynical, unwholesome way. And so no matter how you try to convince the fella of your well intention, the fella cannot get it. Possible, right? So human relationship very complex, yet very simple. It always boils down to the first point there. Desires, expectations, sense of entitlement. Agree? That's the source of relationship problem. Okay? Now let's talk about situation. Right? Same question. Why and when will this happen? When will a situation cause you stress? and give you pain. Ah, when? Ah? Seriously, just think of one event. Ah. You all happy with COVID, right? Everyone very happy with COVID. No, right? Not happy with COVID, right? Why are you so unhappy with COVID? Ah? The virus is in is it? That was a joke. Ay -yo. <laughs> <laughs> Die, man. For this class must bring out my card that says applause. <laughs> Why are, why are you so stressed with COVID? Because of restrictions, right? What else? Freedom, law, yeah, freedom. What else? 
No gathering, no. you miss people who gave you stress. <laughs> what else? What else? Separation from loved ones. Huh? Cannot travel. Uh, cannot travel. What else? Huh? You are the first one that gave me a good answer. Fear of catching it, your fear of your there's fear of falling sick. We all these days are uh, taking it rather lightly, you know. I tell you why. Because we all vaccinated, right? All very arrogant. <laughs> Get infected by COVID, we beat the fellow to death, man. No scared. Well, because you got vaccinated, you're feeling arrogant. If you're not vaccinated, it's a difference. So remember one year ago. The fear was you catch it, you die. If you don't die, you'll fall really sick. It will damage you possibly for life. So one year ago, it was a very scary situation. I'm voiceless. Can you hear me? Yeah. So when will this when when would a situation give you stress is when you have a lot of expectations. You want freedom. For those of you who don't mind no freedom, don't mind being isolated, don't mind just hanging at home and doing nothing, no need to go shopping centre, waste money. If you, have, if you were okay with whatever restrictions, you won't have a problem. If you are not afraid of falling sick and dying from it, not a problem. So it's not a case where wrong me, wrong to be, have fear, not wrong or right, is when you want something else. Then whatever is there, you will resent it. You want something else. If, if, for most of us here, right, we probably have finished our education. Uh, huh? No longer in primary six, no longer O levels, A levels, right? So, if you don't have children going through the school system, you will even think about the school exams. It's irrelevant to you. There's nothing you want there. But if you yourself are going through that education pipeline, or your children, your loved ones going through that, then you have a lot to say to the education minister. For no reason, change the what? At UK, PSLE, don't know what system, exam system, nah, 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 because it matters to you. You have a view because it matters to you. So, the point here is when you have expectations, you have desires, you have wants, preferences, then that situation, if it doesn't pan out the way you want it, will give you stress. Or, as the situation evolves, and you have a desire and you can see the train wreck coming, you are also stressed. I don't want like that, eh? Stress. Give me an example. You all go out for meals, right? You go to restaurants for meals, right? We do that. Now we can. Four of us, no, four of you can join me. Yeah, we can. Eh? For someone who has never eaten in this restaurant, Seeing you guys go in, the fellow will say, Ay, I wish I could have the food there. You guys go in, the food didn't come out the way you want, you go why like that. Okay, right? Agree or not? You have expectation of the quality. But for another person who has never eaten there, you are very blessed. You got a chance to eat in this wonderful fancy restaurant. But you know, you still rather annoyed, service so slow, food not coming fast enough, why cold not hot, why hot not cold, ah, that kind of, neither here, nor the, the more you have expectations, the more you, the more agitated you will be. I want a particular table, I want a particular server, I want it to be next to the window, why the sun not shining, I need my vitamin D, you know, sure you'll be very agitated. See what I'm saying? So the more desires you have, the more agitated you will be, whether it's people or event. Okay? I say it can be self-inflicted. Why? You, you heard of that word Shankara? For those of you who uh, suddenly lapsed into Malay, uh, no, no, not Malay, Bali. Shankara, construction, mental formation. In other words, Thinking too much. 
The mind talks a lot. The more your mind talks, the more craving you have. Did you know that? The more the mind talks, the more craving you will have. It's a reflection. So the more talking, the more wanting. It is proportionate. Okay? The more wanting, the more unhappiness. It is just like that. You don't believe me, you go do your own survey. You go check out your own, your own life. From this point when you leave the class, for the next one hour, you do a journal. If, for every, if, if you can remember, la, retrospective also can. Every time a new thought comes out, you put one. Another new thought comes out, you put two. You can count how many thoughts you have. Then you say, cannot remember, then you die. La. That's a lot of thoughts, law. <laughs> So for those of you uh, who say, I cannot remember, you have a lot of thoughts. I just tell you that. Because if you have one child, you will lose him. Uh. If you have 10 child, you can lose, right? If you have 50 children, you'll forget their names. Agree? Let's see, one child you cannot forget. So if you have one thought, you will remember. If you have 10 thoughts, very good. Surely you can remember. You can remember that there's this thought, then there's this thought, then there's this thought. You got 100. How to remember? What you think I what? Siang ah. Sen sien ah. Cannot remember, right? So you just remember that. Huh? The more you have, the more. So all these thoughts, did somebody point a gun in your head and say, cannot think? Don't have, right? So therefore self inflicted lah. In Cantonese, it's Zikei Law Lei lah. It's self-inflicted. A lot of this thinking that we go on and on and on. It's an internal runaway dialogue. It's self-constructed. So, okay, example. Huh? Let's go back to example. Example, the dining room. You go into this restaurant. You, in your mind, you have already, in your mind, you already decided how many dishes you want to order. And wow, the last time it was like that. Then, ah, yeah, then this is one. That, you know what? I'm going to try this. All these are thoughts, right? Can you see how much desires there is? You go the menu open today, set lunch only. <laughs> you choose nothing. Chef choose for you. Ah, what like that? <laughs> Can you see how duka is gonna be? Uh, all your kopitia all close. Uh. is the first day of New Year. We are so okay. Translated for everyone who don't speak Chinese. Today is the first day of New Year. We don't have enough help. Therefore, you are having set menu. Sorry. Oh yeah, okay, okay, la. Give me water, la. Sorry, you must pay one dollar. <laughs> Can you see the agitation? Uh, uh, next time, not coming back already. I will go trip advisor. Right, right story. Not mutually exclusive. Meaning. Sometimes, congratulations, you have people aggravating event. People. So, you, because you are okay. You actually don't mind eating anything, but your mother cannot. Your wife cannot. Your wife will complain. Then you're very agitated because she's so upset. I know you are not, but still, you know. <laughs> so, therefore, therefore, people aggravating the situation. But it all goes down to desires, expectations, preferences, and so on and so forth. Right up until half an hour later, I still haven't touched on why we are here, right? Okay. Reducing stress in relationships. So this is where it comes in. Why these four matters. Huh? You must be able to neutralize expectations, unrealistic sense of entitlement, unfulfilled desire. Agree? Everybody agree with this statement, agree? Don't agree, then explain why. Agree, then must loud, loud say yes. <laughs> so you all agree, right? It's, it makes sense. If the problem lies with expectations and entitlements and all, then we must bring them all down. Lah. Ah, but it's easier said than done, right? It's easier said than done. You cannot just, I want to be a nicer person. Then, ta-da! Voila. 
Sylvia Bay 201, nicer version. You cannot just like this, I wish and it happens. I wish it's so easy. So therefore, you must cultivate. In other words, you, you, you tackle it by bringing up qualities. You introduce into your mind, your system. You build up these qualities. You build up these qualities, they will neutralize the other parts. You understand, right? Suppose that, think of it this way. Let's say you have a... I don't cook, so using... Oh, you know what? Pain, okay? <laughs> I don't cook, so yes, use pain. Suppose, let's say you have a uh, palette of red pain. Red. Huh? And you want to neutralize this red. It's a, it's a palette of red pain. You want to neutralize, you want to change the red. What do you do? You add other colors. You add white, it becomes pink. You get black, it becomes black. <laughs> You, you add uh, blue, it becomes purple. Purple, huh? Purple. Yeah. So you add things in and it starts to neutralize the original state. If you have anger as your natural habit, anger usually means there is desire on your part, okay? If you have a lot of desire, your anger will be very strong. It's just like that. This is how the brain works. If you have anger, and beneath this anger is your expectations, your desires, your unfulfilled desires, your sense of entitlement, okay? I'm telling you. If you say, I have a lot of anger, it means you have a lot of expectations, a sense of entitlement, unfulfilled desires. It means that. Then what must you do? You must deliberately cultivate having respect for another, cultivate humility, cultivate contentment, cultivate gratitude. You cultivate these four. Si da tian wang. Okay? These are your four si da tian wang. You cultivate these four, it will neutralize. Over time, it will start to neutralize that anger of yours. You cannot neutralize anger by saying, anger be gone. Anger, shoo. Anger, go away. Cannot, it won't work. I must not be angry. I must not be angry, it won't work. Then you say, oh, what about Meta? Meta also sits on this four, by the way, huh? All those wholesome qualities, they form a union. It's called union of wholesome mental states. They come together. You can bring up metta at all times. It means embedded in the metta, these are the four there also. If you say, oh, my metta don't have these four, then your metta is tapake one. It's a seasonal metta. Feeling good, metta come up. Feeling bad, metta disappear. Go on holidays. That's all it is. Okay, so these qualities, these four qualities are necessary condition for positive, fulfilling, affirming, happier relations. Okay, the punchline is not here. I got punchline for you. Okay, now let's talk about the mental states. Earlier on I said I won't go into it, right? I bluff you. I'm going into it in detail, but... But, but I only introduce it after I have explained to you why they are critical. You want to be happy in this life? You want richer relationship? You don't want to be aggravating away at relationship? This thing you can handle. You can do it. Then you need to cultivate. Okay? Let me show you what humility is. Uh. Oh, sorry, respectfulness. So in these two boxes, it will be respectfulness and humility. Let's go first. It takes two at least meaning to say, this word respectfulness is very cute. Of these four, right, two of them are from within that arises. 
with or without another person in the mix. Two of them requires conditions. So respectfulness, having respect for another, it is about relationship. That's why two at least. You cannot like spontaneously, I'm respectful. To what? <laughs> you think about it. Respectfulness means there has to be a relationship somewhere. Okay? What does it mean when you are being respectful? Now, I want you to think about the person you most respect in this life. It could be your parent, it could be your teacher, it could be someone who was once your mentor. You just think of someone. I want you all, huh? If you say you don't have, I give you one. Okay? But you all own. Before I go on, I want all of you to have in mind one individual whom you respect. Can you all think of one? Everybody got one? Who's still thinking? Everyone has one? Okay. Now, in your relationship with this individual that you deeply respect, deeply respect, uh, would you be considerate of what he wants? in your engagement when you are with him or her, would you be mindful and considerate of what the person wants? His welfare, his interests, his state of mind. You will be mindful of that, right? You are considerate of that, right? So correct. At that moment, you have the mental quality of respect. Okay? Now let me ask you, are you careful to accommodate him or her? You're very careful to accommodate, right? He say, oh, shall we sit here? Then you say, sure, let me clean the table for you, uh, the chair for you. <laughs> this kind of table is not so good. Huh? You will not judge this person. Now I tell you, huh, the day you start judging this person, it means your respect is dropping. You will not judge a monastic, right? A sangha. But the day you start wondering, hmm, 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 then you, Sister Sylvia, is it bad karma to think about a monk like that? Huh? <laughs> because you're starting to judge. Yeah, it's starting to judge. It means your respect is diminishing. Okay? I tell you when it happens. These are, your, these are all your, your tools. This is how you know. If you find yourself trying to accommodate, thinking very hard about what, what makes this person happy, when this person is comfortable, and then you don't judge this person. Whatever he say, you say, Dio, Dio, correct, correct. The respect is there. Okay? When you talk to the person, you go, hey, uncle, xiao. <laughs> do you say like that? Huh? Hello, Bante, how are you today? Would you do that? You'll be like, Bante. Huh? Speak softly, speak politely, speak thoughtfully, you're well-mannered. Your mother will say, Ni you, jia jiao. Huh? You, you, have, you have been taught well, huh? well-mannered. Huh? You will request, Bante, would you like to? Huh? Would you like to? Hey, Bante, see here. Lah. It's a problem. <laughs> you won't do that, right? You're not going to do it to him, right? Huh? Ah, some more. You will invite. You will not invite. Impose. You never impose on someone you respect. So, what does this mean? I want you to remember that, that state. In the manner that you treat another, you see for yourself what is missing. And if some of the things are missing, you know the respect in you didn't come out. You were not considerate. You were not careful to speak politely. You were always judging and so on and so forth. When all these things are the opposite, it means you didn't have respect for whomever. Now, I ask you to place it in your relationship with everybody. In your relationship with everyone else, how many of these six are present? And how many of these six are absent? Then you will know for yourself, is your respect for another, respectfulness as a mental state, is it high or is it low? You know for yourself. 
okay? You will know for yourself. If it is high, if respectfulness is a mental state for you, with you at all times, then regardless of whom you speak to, regardless, you will be polite. You will speak kindly, well-mannered. You will not be half the time judging this individual. You will be considerate of the fellow's feelings. Do you see what I'm saying? So only you know on the score of one to six, is your score one, two, or so on. You know. And my advice to you is make a score so that over time you will know for yourself. Have you improved? Or has it gotten worse? Or you are still the same jialat. Okay? Now comes humility. Humility is internal. Humility doesn't actually have to have somebody. You are humble or not. It, it, it actually does not need another individual there. Humility is a mental state. But it's just there. Okay? And what does it mean, right? It means, first, it's the attitude. For those of you who spend your time talking about yourself and truly believing that the world agrees with you, that you are this and you're that and you're that, then you know what? Humility is absent. For those of you who don't really think very hard about yourself, that you're special and you want to be special, if you don't have that, then at least humility is intact. How strong or not depends. We go down that list. We go down that list, okay? Do you or do you not, are you or are you not able to admit mistake? Meaning you, very, if someone say, hey, why, why did you do that? Then you say, oh, sorry, 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 my fault, my fault. Is it easy or is it hard for you? Not judging you, I'm just saying. Is it easy or is it hard? You ask yourself. If it is easier, there is humility. If it is harder, humility at that point, very shaky, if not absent. Okay? You don't get defensive when you are being corrected. There is a willingness to learn. Open-mindedness to learning. These two are connected, huh? If, if you are very instinctively, very defensive, you will not admit mistake. You will fight till the cow comes home, deliver the milk, deliver the calf, and still you will not admit mistake. Okay? And what it means is this inability to learn. That's the cost to you, personally. And this is important state because the Buddha, when he's talking about good disciples, one of the things he talks about is that humility, easy to correct. That's, the, that's how he used it. He said it, okay? And gratitude comes naturally. So you can see they are a bit correct. You can see that there is humility, you'll be respectful. There will be the gratitude. Because humility means you are happy whatever is given to you. So no expectations. Huh? You are gracious. You will take the time to say please and thank you. For those of you who think that saying please and thank you is not cool, I will tell you, you are not cool. You need to be cooler. Okay. Again, you are not judging, you are accepting. So, you know for yourself what's lacking and what's not. I very respectfully and humbly wait for you all to finish taking picture. Okay? I move on. Huh? Later on, we will give you the slides. BF, in its internal wisdom, will give you the slide. Okay? Contentment and gratitude are mutually reinforcing. Again, okay, this is the one. Contentment is a natural inner quality. It's a mental state. 
which arises within, it's unconditional. It does not have to depend on the situation to be there. So what you should do is to look at your own mind, right? And see if you can recognize the mental state of contentment. It's a mental state. It's very subtle. It's very, very subtle. It's just in the corner of your heart. Quietly there, doesn't surface until you're agitated. Then when you're agitated, you know contentment went to hide. It's not there. But if it's never, if you're never agitated, then you know contentment is really a, a natural state for you. Okay? No expectations. So this is this is I don't have to explain. Uh. Contentment means you are more accepting. More accepting. Okay? Easily satisfied. This part you may not know. Little need to control the world. You say, I never want to control the world. Okay, let me ask you. Are you the sort that say, I like, I like things to be in a certain way? If I put things on the table, it must be like that. Hey, you come and sit next to me. And you sit there, you sit there. Uh, can you like, don't sit there, you sit there. The feng shui bad. Are you the sort that is very particular? Are you very particular? When people are with you, you, do you have rules? The more rules you have, the more particular you are, the less contented you are. That's how you know. For those of you who say, I'm easily content. Hey, you, why are you? Ah, that sort, right? Delusional level, delu delusional quotient very high. I'm very contented, but I have, uh, these are my 360 rules. <laughs> if you fulfill all these 360 rules, I'm very contented. Your need to control, to shape your environment, shaping your environment, transforming people, changing the world. That's what it means. Maybe I should change the words. Controlling the world means you are trying to shape the environment according to your desire. Okay? It's what people will say, we chin chai la. Huh? You are contented, you're very chin chai. So, we will have a new quotient for you, the chin chai quotient. The higher your chin chai quotient, the more contented you are. Okay? And when your contentment is high, your mind is not constructing all the time. So, for those of you who tell me, I'm pretty contented. Eh, but then my mind flies all over the place. They don't go together. Huh? When you are really contented, have you gone for retreat? Huh? Have you all gone for retreat? You go for retreat, and at a retreat, you don't have a lot of thoughts. Right? You're actually quite easily satisfied. That's contentment, and that's how the mind will be. When you're contented, the mind doesn't think a lot. You are in the present. Why do I say constantly seeking improvement? The two and three are connected. I want to shape. I want to tweak. I want to make things the way I like it. I'm constantly trying to change things. Now, in your treatment of children, young ones, that's when you can really see whether your contentment is there or not. He jump, 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 you complain. He sit down there quietly, you complain. He want to, he, he, you complain. Your contentment zero. And you're giving him a lot of pain. You see what I'm saying? You, you can't accept him or her for whom they are. At the moment, he's enjoying his life. And you are being the pain. <laughs> okay? <laughs> One who is contented, because, because contentment leads to a state of pleasantness, the person will only look for the good. Now, this is very cute. It's conditional. The day that you, you all have, I should not be presumptuous. Let me ask you. You all have had a temper bought before, right? You have lost your temper before, right? Okay. At the point when your anger was up, can you see, do, do you see good or do you see bad in whatever you're dealing with? 
bad lah. Yeah. Sister Sylvia so stupid. Ask stupid question. Huh? Yeah. See, bad lah. If you're contented, you're happy, right? And therefore, you see the good law. So the kid is like playing, playing, playing. Instead of saying, wow, so badly behaved. Huh? Why I uh, cannot sit still? Huh? You'll be saying, oh, so cute. He's having fun. <laughs> Can you see how the mind switches the story? I like that law. Yeah? Like that. Huh? Okay. More flexible, more open-minded, less skeptical. Again, less judging. Okay? Less skeptical and judging. A contented person will always be peaceful and happy. That's all. That is your third noble truth, cessation of dukkha. Okay? Now, gratitude. Finally, I oh, so long-winded. Finally, yeah. Gratitude must always have this interaction. You are, you are grateful for someone. You are grateful to someone. You are grateful for this. You are grateful about this. I, I'm grateful that the Buddha left behind the Dhamma for us. So, so gratitude, right? At a start, eventually gratitude can be a state of mind, so it's inherent. But at the start, right? It has to be towards something. There's a relationship there. At the start, Okay, eventually, when it's such a habit in your mind, you're just gratitude, you're just grateful. It can happen. So this is the unique one. Okay, and when you have gratitude, right, the stronger it is, the more you feel unworthy of the blessing. Why am I so special that I can be like this? It's just a state of mind, lah. Not that you have to, but the, the point here is there is humility. You can be grateful only if you have humility. You don't believe me, you think about the people who are proud. They're very grateful people. Not. Think of someone you know in your life who is arrogant, who is proud. Do they have gratitude? You ask yourself. Think about it. Huh? Think about it. No need to give me the answer. I know I write one. You just think about it, okay? Thinking about it is for you to realize that the Buddha's teaching about these mental states are extremely powerful. It helps us to manage relationship beautifully. So don't take his words as, I know already, I know already, I know already. You, I know already, I know already means you've got no humility. You're not respectful to the Buddha. You never pay attention to his words. Oh, like that, okay. So you have to, you sit down there, every time you look at his words, you tell yourself, I don't know enough. Let's just look at this with a fresh pair of eyes, just fresh eye, look at it. And then you learn something in the process. Because, because his wisdom is so deep and so profound, we only spend a bit of time examining it. How can we reach that level of depth? So we must keep going, keep doing it, okay? Now, next one. Let me ask you, for those of you who, when that sense of gratitude arises, huh, at that point, did you have this sense, I must give back, I must do something? You do, right? How many of you have experienced it before? That you just have to do something to someone. Huh? That's gratitude. When this thing comes up, the stronger, the more intense it is, the more you want to give back, the more you want to serve. It is natural. If you say, uh, don't have, leh, you sure that thing is called gratitude or not? That would be my question to you. If you say, I don't have, uh, I don't, there isn't this desire to serve. Your gratitude like missing one wheel. Leh. It is not strong enough. When it's not strong enough, that compulsion to serve will not be there. Okay? Gratitude and contentment is symbiotic. They come together. Now, then you say, hey, I've got a lot of gratitude. Am I easily contented? Yes. To a certain extent. So, sometimes people's gratitude is seasonal, conditional. So at the point when there is gratitude, at that point when there is gratitude, the contentment is present. When the contentment dissipates, gratitude can also fizzle out. Can you see what I'm, do you see what I'm saying? They say, I'm, 
I'm a very grateful person, I see. Correct. Which means that at the point when you are feeling very grateful, there is also a sense of peace. There's also a sense of contentment. It's just like that. We have not reached a stage where these mental states are effectively packed in your brain. We are still cultivating. So you cultivate to a certain degree when they are now permanent residents, huh? PR with passport type, huh? then you are fine. It means your natural instincts now very wholesome. You don't have to worry about getting angry. It will angry. Instead of angry, we sell volcano, woo, woo, woo. generally, you also be like, Whoo, ah, fireworks on a New Year's Day during COVID time. <laughs> huh? So just remember, okay? Cultivate yourself to the point that you are fireworks, COVID time. Hardly ever come out and it comes out in spurts, okay? Light-hearted and you focus on the, pre or the positive. And this is the part that I want to stress. You have gratitude. In every bad situation, you will have a healthy takeaway. You will learn something from whatever situation. Why is that? Because you don't feel very entitled, ma. You don't feel entitled. You are the sort that say, whatever that's given to me, I'm very happy. Then you are stunned by something that is wrong. Then you say, what has gone wrong? Because when you feel very entitled, you, in the story that is churning in your head, it will be, why like this? Why not like this? How come this person is doing it this way? When you feel very entitled, your story is spinning in an unwholesome way. And it's all about I, my, me. When your mind is with gratitude, the story that is spinning is a wholesome one. Oh dear, something I did wrong? I must learn from this. Something like that. Lah. Okay, so these mental states, go home, memorize, spend a bit of time reflecting on how it affects you. Okay? Summary. On part one. <laughs> Cultivate respectfulness, humility, contentment, gratitude. Given, ah, no need to repeat. Moderate expectations and eradicate, eradicate sense of time. So you want to reduce problems in your relationship, you must cultivate these four mental states. You must learn to moderate your expectations, which, which will help you moderate your expectations, reduce the sense of entitlement, okay? Ah, be considerate, be generous, be empathetic. You avoid imposing. So these are words... These are words that, this is the one I want to tell you. In whatever stressful situation, the main thing to fix, to solve, is your mental state, not another. Most of us tackle it in the wrong place. We try to fix the other person to our expectations. Then you say, but what if the other person is the problem? If you learn to see things from his perspective and you learn to walk away with understanding that he's in pain, you reduce more pain for yourself. You feel sorry, you feel empathetic. This person is struggling, he has a lot of problem. You walk away. I will bring you to Mangala Sutta number one. Asewana cha balanang. Do not associate with the fool. Walk away. I, I cannot walk away. Then you are the fool. You cannot walk away means you are the fool. Right? Then you say, yeah, but then what my husband also can ma? You every day stare at him, eh? Just stare at him, eh? 24 hours a day, you probably don't have to stare at him 24 hours. Right? I mean, he has to work. And, and so on. So you, you really, there is no... Unless the fella is a baby. Baby, then somebody has to be with the fella all the time. But most cases, you don't have to be. You minimize contact. And while you're minimizing contact, you keep fixing your own mind. 
bring out the humility, bring out the contentment, and no, 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 no. You, you cultivate these mental states, you will learn to judge another ha less harshly. You learn to judge less, you learn to minimize your own expectations, you moderate that. Then, the next time you cross path, it's not so painful. Okay? Slowly, lah. You think the fellow is werewolf, ah? only a silver bullet, that's it, solve the problem. There's no werewolf and there's no silver bullet. You have to fix your own first, okay? B. Wait, I take a drink first. I said this earlier, right? All stressful situations arise from desires and expectations, and in a way, it's mind-made, in a way, because your mind keeps talking, thinking, thinking. So then how do you fix this, right? Moderate expectations and desire. So basically, you have to tell yourself, huh? teach you this. Okay, I'll give you the rest. Lah. Be realistic and practical. Be prepared to make trade-offs. Many of us in any situation when it's high stress, it's because you refuse to budge. It has to be like this. I want it this way. If you are prepared to accommodate, compromise, make trade-offs, be practical, right? Look, it's not your perfect dish tomorrow, then come back. Today, you just eat what is there. Something like that. Trade-offs. But no, no, I feel so cheated. I dreamt the whole lunch for this dish and it's not there. You're not going to die tonight, right? Tomorrow, then come again. Uh. So in your mind, you learn to tell yourself, it's okay. I will accept like this. So you teach yourself to keep accepting the lesser. No need maximum return. No need the best part. You teach yourself to accept less. Okay, specifically, teach yourself to keep asking yourself, what can I accept less? Then, less also don't have. Okay, not lesser. You keep paring down your expectations. Keep doing that until you have no expectation. Then, sweet. Congratulations, you're a happy person. You see what I'm saying? So, in every situation, I want my child to score four A star. Three A star can or not? Uh, okay, 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 three A star. Two A star can or not? Uh, yeah, okay, okay, two A star. One A star Canada. <laughs> yeah, like that how? A stars did not fail. <laughs> fail is D, right? C D, yeah. So so you, you learn to then then you say then you then you ask yourself, why is it must be four A star? Why? Why do you need four A star? Then my child is the best in the world. Even sounds stupid talking to yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? So next time, you're not sure you talk aloud to yourself. Say it to yourself. I want my child to have four A-star. I want a salary that's what? 10,000. 9,000 cannot. What about 8,000? Eh? So, so you, you, you basically systematically bring down your expectation. Since you're so hardwired to have high, right? Then you slowly, slowly. Then you say, yeah, but it takes a long time. You have the rest of your life. Yeah? You have your rest of your life. You can be happier next half rather than you insist on your way and you'll be miserable to the end. You will be. It's a given. High expectations, you have problems. So the word here is being content, right? Now, tackling situ uh, situational stress number two. So one part is yourself, managing your own expectation. The second part is managing people, okay? You will require you to have skillful, wise managing of people. Because, let me ask you this. Let's just talk about, I don't know, what gives stress? Work. Work stress, how much of it is about people? Yourself? your boss, your colleagues, it's all about people. So the stress at work, apart from tackling the work as is, is really about managing relationship. 
So because it's about human, right? The quartz. Huh? What's the quartz? You know what's quartz, right? Four. Respectfulness, humility, contentment, and gratitude. The quartz. Gang of four. Lah. These four, as I have indicated to you earlier, you cultivate these four mental states, it will tackle any relationship. Any relationship. Money back guarantee. Not that I took your money. Right? Final words. Huh? I love this picture. The quotes are non-negotiable, must have for us. Two, okay? You must have these quotes in order to achieve the following. Coming up, for us to meet sila, cultivation of sila, morality, cultivation of sila, right? For us to be able to grow in wholesome ways and be happier, better, happier people, you need these four mental states. You must cultivate them. If you don't know how to, go back and look at them again. Okay? Number one. Number two. By now, you're quite clear. You have these four mental states. You will have positive, constructive fulfilling relationship. Agree? Okay? And because you are a happier person, you will then feel that your life is meaningful, rewarding, satisfying. At your deathbed, you're not going to say, one hell of a wasted life. You won't say that. You'll say, hey, this is a good ride. Hope done enough for the next good ride. So you are like in Disneyland and not in some Elm Street ride. Okay? To be able to meditate, so for those of you who are think, talking about meditation, there are three parts to it. To be able to meditate, to have that stillness of the moment, meaning there's mindfulness, ease with ease, effortless mindfulness to have the most profound of spiritual experience. And finally, to be able to grow in the Dhamma, to have periodic awakening insights, to have that confidence as you travel this Dhamma journey. So you will think that this should be the last slide. No, I got one punchline. <laughs> You have the quotes, you will have a good, blessed life with a deep sense of well-being and happiness. So it's New Year, ma. It's a New Year, right? Uh, na, 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 na. And therefore, voila. Wow. <laughs> have a happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, happy New Year. Okay, now comes question answer. This is the boring part. <laughs> okay, anyone? Yes, please. Anyone here have any questions? Uh, no, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I'll just hold it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you can't hold the mic either. Huh? She must hold the mic for you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh. Like, stressful situations, like, nope, okay. When you're stressed, you're angry, and you apply these four qualities. Like, oh, you cultivate these four qualities. Um, but if you're stressed because you're worried, you're scared, so somehow or rather when you're angry, the eye is very big. And these four qualities, I see that you will help to reduce the eye. But when you're scared, you don't know what to do. The eye is, is small. So how do you like, um, what do you do? Because you're already respectful because you don't know what you want. And you know what I'm trying to say? Okay, that's all. I got to read between the lines, right? <laughs> I know what you're saying. You're saying that when you're scared, right? I mean, these four qualities don't seem to be, a, to, to be applicable of sort. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah? So let's say if there are fear arising, right? So the first thing you must do when... I taught you earlier three deep breath, okay? The first thing you must do is to calm the mind. When you are scared, there is no fear without... 
Okay? There is no fear without thoughts. Meaning to say, uh, this is the magic. Let's say you walk into a place that is very dark. And your mind goes crazy. Oh, got this and no, I got that and no, uh, maybe I'm alone. Uh, uh, uh. You tell yourself, uh, stop talking. Take three deep breaths. I can guarantee you the fear will start to calm down. Fear is fed by thoughts. Okay? If you are in a place where it feels odd, what you need to do is actually really just deep breath in and stop thinking. When you stop thinking, there is a sensation. There will still be a sensation because the lingering chemicals released are still there. The sensation is because of those chemicals released. Your adrenaline, your cortisol, they have been released. Earlier on, released already. So now you are just experiencing the effects of the cortisol and the adrenaline. Therefore, there is still that, that wobbliness. But if you don't think, you don't, don't go saying that maybe there's this, maybe there's that, what, what, maybe I should do this. You stop, you stop the internal dialogue then all you're feeling is effect and nothing. The fear will not build. It will stabilize, it will wobble, it will start to diminish, start to diminish. You just be patient. Then you can, if you want to have any thought, if you want to have any thought, you ask yourself, what is it that you want? There is something that you want. You want to be safe. You want to, to feel secure. Okay, that you sure have one. You want not to die. So what is it that you want? Those are the things you want, but they're not said. It's just there because you are not in charge. Your, your system is in charge. And our system has been configured to keep you alive. Your system they are like silent sentinel, you know. They, they will look around and, oh, they estimate that there might be problem. They will release the adrenaline and get you to start. It still has light. Time for BF to buy a new mic. Eh, eh, eh. So your system has been configured to keep you alive. You understand? So every time you are frightened, right? Take your three deep breaths to calm the, homo the, the chemicals down. Stop talking. Be very mindful. Make sure that the words that are blabbing away stop. Then you will feel the lingering effects of the earlier release cortisol, adrenaline, Tell yourself, it's okay, it's fine. The mind is starting to calm down and you must quietly walk out. This has nothing to do with the quartz, okay? The, then you say, but, but the quartz, it can help if you can tell yourself, I'm happy with this life, it's okay. I don't, I don't wish for more, it's okay. I have faith in the Dhamma, it's okay. Something like this. It can tackle it. Now, if let's say your fear is with regards human, for whatever reason, then you tell yourself, in this relationship, I will be respectful. I will not get defensive. Humility, no defensiveness. Whatever he wants to say, just let him say. I'll be respectful. The guy has to be a pathological madman, huh? to when someone speaks to him with respect, with humility, he still wants to beat you. The fear that you have is a constructed fear. Okay? And in this constructed fear, it's a long time. That we, I must stress, all these will work. It is whether your mind believes in it faster or slower. Because some of you, even though I'm telling you all this, you have skepticism, which is a habit. Meaning, your mind says, I know better, it won't work. Then you won't apply. So you won't apply, then you cannot work because you don't, you don't 
Doctor tell you eat medicine, don't believe. Take two instead of four. 50% work only. Lo. So if you really want it to work, you have to believe in it. You have to cultivate humility. You have to cultivate that respectfulness. It must become second nature. Then it will work for you. In any relationship, you give the person that respect. You give the person that sense that you are not looking down on him. You are you're having an equal relationship, respectful relationship. Then, for sure, you will be one of the person he will like. Who doesn't like to be respected? You see what I'm saying? So I know you have fear. Some of us have fear with regards. Take a deep breath. Always take that three deep breath. It works. Okay? The deep breath will calm your systemic chemicals, giving your mind the time to work. Okay? Next. I think a lot of questions online. No? Anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, Sister Sylvia. Uh, I have a question about well, one of the stresses. I think, as you said, many people have different stresses. So in times of COVID, um, maybe family or work um, are more focused upon where you know, we can't travel, etc. So in terms of work, um, I practice Dharma for about one year and I find that uh, certain things work, uh, certain things are pretty difficult to achieve. Um, I have situation where another colleague uh, said, oh, I think you demonstrated this and that, uh, we are very grateful. But there are some situation where uh, in maybe a higher stress work environment in say banking or corporate life, is, there are many objectives and the system is just stress. So how do we balance practicing the four pillars or quotes, as you said, versus trying to help the company achieve what they traditionally want to achieve? Um, and, and, and possibly, is it, uh, in the end, it's a matter of choice. You know, should we be contented and taking less from the world uh, in a different work environment? So how do we think about these things? Thank you. This is an excellent question. A lot of layperson will have this kind of a question. And actually, you gave your own answer, right? You, you gave your own answer. It is really a matter of choice. We, we practice Dhamma to understand the conditions affecting the mind and how to mitigate those conditions. And... Practicing Dhamma is not to have your cake and to eat it. Meaning, I continue like this and be happy. That's having your cake and eat it. I want, I want all these mundane desires fulfilled and still be happy. That's not condition of the mind. That's condition of one thing. Conditions of the mind means the, most, the more desires you have, the more stresses you will experience. We then have to tackle different sets of condition to reduce that stresses. One of the stress factors, one of the stresses in life is people, desires and relationship expectations of each other. So the courts help you to tackle relationship, okay? Then with regards situation, this one is about yourself. You will have to tackle that level of contentment. When our mind is fixated about outcome, sometimes we don't see it clearly where that contentment is off. I'll give you an example. Suppose, let's say, I'm not, I'm not a banker. So, I, whatever I say about banking, all bluff one. Lah. <laughs> all my created make-believe. So, I have a bottom line. Yeah, fair enough. I have a bottom line which maybe 
let's say I'm frontline, I'm expected to deliver a certain number of clients amounting to some amount of investments and this is my bottom line and I have a whole bunch of fellas expected to deliver this. If I want the money and the recognition and the accolade from my company at, at my bank at the end of the day, if I want that, contentment has to go. It's just like that. But if let's say I say, you know what? We'll leave it to the condition. We we'll just try our best. We we'll just try our best. If we don't meet it, we don't meet it. I apply for change of job. Something like that. Then you say, not very practical. You Buddhist, right? We are being practical. You want to key sell? Or you want to key? <laughs> oh, no, no. Actually, you key and you go sell. <laughs> Basically, you must. You, 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 then you recognize that with the demands that you have, it's inevitable there will be that stress. Then you tell yourself, I will continue to do my best. I'm, I'm teaching my mind not to have too much hang up about outcome. I'm just going to focus on two things. I'm going to focus on just doing my best. And number two, looking after people. The team that I work with, I'm going to look after them. I'm going to set myself as a role model on how you can survive in this very difficult life, difficult world, very high charging, very high expectations. I will help them cope. So your KPI has changed. Your KPI is no longer the bank's bottom line. Your KPI is looking after people. So difficult, man. It's change. And what does it require of you? Change in mindset. Change in narrative. Change your story. You write your own story. So your story is, I'm content if one member of my team understands and is able to survive and thrive. My KPI is one member of my team. Then you say, I'm not leader. One member of my team mate. You see what I'm saying? So when you change your focus from an outcome that you want, or rather the company wants, to an outcome that you can live with, that gives you meaning, the stress is changed by your own doing. Okay? Tukang. No more. No more from the floor. Okay, we shall. We have a few. Oh, one more. You see, on site attendance has its privileges. <laughs> your answers, you get your answers first. Uh, hi, Sister Sylvia. Um, so, oftentimes uh, we feel stress um, because of our compassion or love for the people that we love. Lah. And. Um, and for example, uh, if, I wanna, um, if I want my parents to exercise more, I will ask them to exercise more, but sometimes they don't, right? And it causes me stress. Or for example, this morning, I'm trying to get my friend to come into this Dharma talk, but he just refused. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a good stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it's, it's almost crazy to think that uh, uh, exercising or association to the Dharma is bad for the person, right? So my question is, how, how do I be contented with, um, with, with, with my expectation of what I think is good for the person? Of, yeah. Okay, very good question. You know, expectations can be expectation of results, which most times we are, because we're very Singaporean. Uh, uh, you're Singaporean, right? You're Malaysian. We're very Malaysian. Uh. <laughs> we're very human. We have expectations of people. Actually, you have expectations of results. I want them to achieve this level of fitness. I want them to do this, this, that, because it's good for them. No, you shouldn't have expectations of yourself. That's all. I want to be a good person and I will provide the opportunity. So this is tackling one part. Now, there are two parts to this tackling. So one part is tackling your own thoughts. You tackle it by changing your End point. Instead of saying, he, uh, my parents achieving this level of health, 
wellness, physical wellness. Your point is, I want to spend time walking with them. Come, come, let's go shopping. Surely they will go shopping. So come, let's go shopping. Let's go. You want to bring them to do things. Don't get them to be in charge of their own outcome. You really want an outcome, you've got to bring them. Okay? So he said, let me walk with you. Let's spend time together. So instead of exercise, it becomes spending time together. That can help you to overcome their resistance to the idea of exercise. It's very tactical. But the bigger point is really changing your own KPI. As I've said to you, KPI means what is it at the end point that I want? Is it an outcome you cannot control or, an, or, or uh, uh, something that you can control? So what can you control? You can control whom you share information with. Then what people do with the information is people's choice. You focus on just providing the platform, providing the opportunity. Then you must tell yourself, I have no control over people's choices. Don't put that as your KPI. If you can't stop yourself setting goal, then choose a goal that you can control outcome. Not the end goal where you cannot. So in any situation, there are always two parts. There is you and there is a someone else. The you part you can set. The someone else choices you cannot control. Don't try and set that as your goal. So example, huh? I will tell someone I love, I hope you will do well, and I really hope they will do well in their exams. And you will provide them with the learning environment during your exam. The house is not watching TV right next to you. Uh, I will maybe prepare but nutritional soup, not that I do, but I'll prepare nutritional soup. I will do those things. But it comes to the final result, I have no control. Even whether or not the fellow wants to say, I have no control. I can only support you to a certain point, but the actual outcome, conditions. So contentment means you're teaching yourself to accept condition, accept the part, the huge part you cannot tackle, people's reaction people's decision, all the foolish ones and the wise ones, it's out of your hand. Then what can you do for them? You can slowly, slowly explain to them what's great, what is good. Slowly, slowly, you have that opportunity to share. Then full stop, no expectation. You share and full stop, no expectation. Then if you are a good role model, Others will be interested and they will follow you over time. Okay? It's never immediate. So take away, number one, pick the angle you can control, not the one you can't. Make it immediate circle, just within your space. I just provide the condition, I give you the ideas, then the rest, conditions, not your choice. Okay? So moderate your, your expectation, moderate your angle. May be fine. Thank you, Sis Sylvia. We have three online questions. Uh, Sis Anamo Budaya, Sis Sylvia. How do we equate Chin Chai with discipline? Depending on where you put your Chin Chai. La. <laughs> Discipline is what you impose on yourself. So certain mental states you want to cultivate, you cultivate. Like faith and morality, generosity. Those are the mental states you want to have discipline bringing up. Discipline your words, your action, how you think. You just discipline those. You are chin chai about outcome. So I will discipline my mind, I will put in effort, then if it yields nothing, it yields nothing. Meaning I cannot convince so and so to come with me, so be it, it's okay. You don't be chin chai with your words. I want to score, I score. Chin chai la. 
I want to beat up, I beat up. Chi chai la. Cannot like that. That one, you need discipline. Okay? Thank you. The second one. In situations of a caregiver to bedridden elderly who takes care of her almost 24-7, there is daily stress and fatigue. How does a person in such situations deal with it according to what you have just shared? Oh, this is very hard. Of course it's very hard. Because when you are taking care of another for an extended period, there will be a part in you that will start to resent. It is normal. So the first thing you need to do is forgive yourself. If you start to feel agitated, your feelings start to get a bit um, negative, just forgive yourself. The first thing you have to forgive is yourself. It's okay, you've done your best. You are doing a great job. Secondly is, you must always find a bit of time to rest. You have to take time out. You have to take time out because you need time for yourself. Most of us, when we are very fixated, very obsessing about another, at some point, the desire will arise. Desire. And this desire can shoot in all angles. It need not be standard. Uh. It can shoot in all angles. It can shoot in, why can't you improve? Why can't you be reasonable? Why this? Why that? It will start to ask. When that part of the mind starts, right? When the question starts, why can't you be this? Why must I be that? Why is so-and-so not helping? When that question starts, you have to take, you have to take leave. Right? You have to walk out, because when a, when the question when the, when your, your your mind start talking in that way, the the every conversation that you have within is going to be a bad one. You will forget why you took on the responsibility in the first place. You took it on because of love, because of duty, because of compassion because of sympathy or empathy. Those are very powerful and wholesome mental states. When you start asking why this, why that, those mental states you will forget. So what I would advise is take a, lead, take a break, go to do, do something you like, go to a monastery, go to watch a movie, whatever. Just take a break. Take a deep breath while you're at your break and then you ask yourself, why am I doing this? Revisit this original question. Why am I doing this? Because I'm so and so child. But why are you doing this? Because I'm grateful? Because I'm sorry? Because I love? So you, you must take time out to revisit the big question Go back to original first principle. Then you say, because nobody wants to look after, then you are the generous one. You are the compassionate one. Did you know how much, how powerful the mental states, those mental states are? You see what I'm saying? Even when it's something negative, like because nobody wants to take charge, then you are the one doing it. You are the compassionate one. You are the generous one. You don't forget those mental qualities. Then you say, yeah, but it's becoming, happening more often. Then you are long overdue for a break. For those people who are in this very admirable state, looking after another, for an extended period, you must periodically look after yourself. Arrange for someone to sit in a day. Arrange for more people to take turns. Take your break. Go back to your original question, why am I doing this? Affirm yourself in those mental states. Come back for the next round. You don't take care of yourself, you cannot last this long haul. Okay? Sorry. Two more questions. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more came in. 
Often I am stressed because I know people I love are suffering and harming themselves from their high expectations and they are put off by Dhamma. Uh, how to help? You help yourself first. When people are stressed and they have the ignorance for whatever reason or they are just picking all the wrong choices, all you can be is be a non-judging, supportive person and teach yourself not to want an outcome for them. Many a times your expectations is not just about a person's behaviour but an outcome for people. I wish them to be well. Why they go around without masks? What is wrong with them? Yellow. I will tell you, yellow. We have all kinds of people in this world, ma. Then you say, then how? They fall sick. Then they fall sick, lo. Then you say, hey, like that, can. can. Look, I asked you a very simple question. Huh? Everybody can answer one, I guarantee you. It's a Dhamma question. Everybody can answer. Are you Buddha? Buddha also walk away. You see know what I'm saying? Buddha also had to walk away. And whom did he fail to correct? His own blood cousin. Devadatta was his cousin. Why? You're better than Buddha. You want to fix your family. Buddha couldn't fix his own family. I thought that was very illuminating. He also had limitations but what's difference what's the difference between us and the buddha is that the buddha know when to pull handbrake ours we let the car careen into the abyss right we don't know how to pull handbrake we like must try must try this one my son this one my son seriously you can only do it if the person wants. So then what can you do? You don't use the word Dhamma. You say the word, modern psychology say, huh? then you throw in all the Dhamma words. Because, and I'm telling you, I, I've been spotting so many, you know, you go and check YouTube Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Modern psychologists, right? Talking about how to be happy. Being in the moment they found, regardless of how bad the situation is, if you are in the moment there, you are happy. Hello? Got attribute or not? Who came out with it first? Ta da! Right? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so, so what is wrong with the modern age? Only when the psychologists say they believe. When Buddha say people don't believe, superstition, oh, sure. You see what I'm saying? So, don't use the word Dhamma. When you are trying to teach people who are not Buddhists, who are secularists, because they believe in the constitution of Singapore, right? Rather than the Sutta, right? Those kind, those kind. They don't need lah. Just explain to them the noble truth in ordinary lay person language. The Buddha didn't ask you to ascribe to him and quote people, quote to people, Arya Satya. He got asked you to ensure pirated men don't have. He just wants people to understand and be happy. Okay? So you can quote modern psychologists, explain to them the science of the mind. They will listen to science. Okay? Thank you. Okay, we will take this last question. Please, no more questions online. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sis Sylvia, for the talk. Out of humility, respect and gratitude, there are people whom we cannot simply dissociate with. Sometimes the conversations with these people can turn really negative. While I'm not attain, I've not attained the state of being a bottomless dustbin, what other ways can I manage such relationships? Don't talk. <laughs> Don't have a conversation. Just smile at the person. Must you talk? If you find no joy in a conversation, 
don't talk seriously. Then the fellow say, want to talk, then let the fellow talk. Then you tune the fellow out. No, I'm serious. I am serious. I have encountered people where they are always talking about themselves. They can't help it. Then you just say, okay, they are so happy. Then you rejoice with them. Oh, I'm so happy for you. You're so happy. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry if I sound rather uh, disrespectful. It's not. I'm serious. When you are in a situation, when someone don't make sense, they have a lot of views, and their views are not very wise, very conducive, you either walk away, because sitting down there is just going to stain your mind. It's staining your mind. It's building resentment. You smile very sweetly and say, I need to get coffee. <laughs> then you walk away, okay? You just be a coffee addict. So that's one. Or if you cannot walk away, then you sit down there, and in your mind, you can chant prayer. Iti piso arahan. So that you're not engaging in this conversation, okay? You're not just listening to this person. Or, or you can calm this person down. If you need to calm this person, yeah, law. Mm, uh huh. You know, our Chinese language has so many useful words. Huh? Huh? Hmm. Uh -huh. uh, oh, uh, like this. Okay. Get your repertoire ready. They don't need. They don't need you to give wise feedback. Those uh, non-intelligible words. They are very happy. They just need the acknowledgement. Okay. Then you say, "I feel compelled to talk." Remember what I said. Fix your own mind first. It's because you feel compelled to react. Don't feel compelled to react. Don't feel compelled to give in to Akusala. Don't feel compelled by that. Feel compelled. Train yourself to feel this awareness of keeping mind clean. So you need to vaccinate your mind. Not against COVID, but against Akusala. Build sufficient strength to protect it. Okay? Okay, we're done, right? As always, uh, we will do this first. Today, we actually have to share merits with two others, but just as a reminder to everyone, in gratitude, and you know what I've said here very, very often, that we want to honour the Buddha's teaching by being wholesome and giving. And please support a charity or spiritual organisation. More importantly is we must not take for granted the blessings of this life. That others before us had done right, so we are in this wonderful state, this blessed state, we must set the right conditions for the ones that come after. May we all continue to enjoy supportive conditions for learning and practice, and may we never deviate from the Dhamma as long as life lasts. Now I would like to invite everyone to share merits. Is it here? Two of our brothers and sisters have approached us to seek our help in sharing merits with their departed loved ones. This is Madam Chong Siu Kwan, died, passed away on the 30th December. This lovely lady. May she be well and happy wherever she has been reborn. This very young man. Mr. Rudy Sujato, Suharto, Rudy Suharto. Sorry, Mr. Rudy. And he passed away just a few days ago. May he be well wherever he had a reason. So can I invite all of you just a minute to share the merits that you have accrued today. May they both be well and happy. Okay?
Thank you so much, Sister Sylvia, for the very inspiring sharing. Uh, shall we all say three sadhu? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Sister Sylvia. In Anjali, let us all invite all sentient beings to participate in our acquired merits. Etawata cha amhehi sambatang punya sampadang sabe dewa anumodantu saba sampati sidia etawata cha amhehi sambatang punya sampadang Sabe buta anumodantu saba sampati sidia etawata cha amhehi sambatang punya sampadang sabe sata anumodantu saba sampati sidia let us dedicate the marriage of participating in a wholesome Dhamma activity to our departed relatives and friends. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. Idang me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. Ida me nyati nang ho tu sukita ho tu nyata yo. I dedicate the marriage which I've cumulated to the cultivation of my mind in order to bring happiness and benefits to all sentient beings. I dedicate the marriage to my parents, children, spouse, relatives, friends, colleagues, and my adversaries, wishing them long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May we never part from the triple gem, and may we always walk the path towards enlightenment. Let us pay respect to the triple gem. Arahang sama sambudo bagawa Budang bagawan tang abiwademi Swakato bagawata damo Namang namasami Supati panno bagawato sawaka sango sanggang namami Sadu, sadu, sadu.